some of you have PC, but most of you have Mac, all right? So there's a few things you need to do to your Apple computer before Pro Tools will work. Your system preferences. And let me zoom in on this for you. And you are going to look for Spotlight. And you're going to click on Spotlight. And then at the bottom, it says Keyboard Shortcuts. You're going to click on this. Oh, wait, let me go back. Sorry. Okay. Shortcuts right here. You're going to... So in other words, they've got all these different tabs you can collect. Uh, you, so right here, you're going to click on Shortcuts. And typically, these two will be checked, right? These two use key commands that we use in Pro Tools, so they make them not work. So you need to uncheck them. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screenshot of this and pop it in the chat. So you have quick access to it. Why won't it go into the chat? Jeez. Oh, come on. You want to set up a secondary click on the right side if you have a mouse, right? If you don't have a mouse and you're using a trackpad, we'll deal with that later, all right? But this way you can right click and just click. Um, there is a way to do that with the Mac keyboard, which I'll show you as well. But the, 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 the spotlight is the most important thing to turn that off. All right. That, that really screws things up. Now, Pro Tools, if you go into your Applications folder, this is for Mac. For PC, it's a little different. Um, I'm not really familiar with PC, unfortunately, even if it has the same initials with me. What you're going to want to do is take your Pro Tools icon here and you're going to want to drag it and put it in your dock. So in other words, I've got it down here so that I can quickly access it. And I'm going to quit Pro Tools now. Okay, so it's in the dock so you can quickly access it. So I'm going to turn Pro Tools on by cl clicking on that in the dock or double clicking on it in the Applications folder. And then you're going to see this splash screen come up here. And then it's going to load in all the plugins. Now, the first time that you boot this up, it's going to take longer than it will the second and third time because Pro Tools learns where everything is and learn and it has searches for stuff and then it remembers that in the in the cache of some sort. So you're going to get this bit here, which is called the dashboard. Okay, and I'm going to create a project now, and I'm going to call this. Class one, one, I think today's the 26th. So you name it. And you want local storage. You don't want collaboration and cloud. You, you do not want that. And we'll, we'll, we'll go over templates later. But the next thing what I want you to do is look down here. And you're going to set this up. So for our classes, this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using .wav files for our audio files. Our bit depth is 24-bit. And these are things that I'm going to be going over when we start to deal with audio uh, later in the semester. But just for right now, let's just talk with these. With, I'll just tell you what to do and you just try to follow along. And our sample rate is 44.1. Now, you can click on... One thing to learn about Pro Tools is that there are sp spaces where you have a small triangle. It could be facing sideways or downwards. That always means that if you click there, there's more options underneath it. So in other words, you may start off looking like this, right? And AIFF is just an older file type. I use Broadcast Wave, BWF files. Um, that's because... I like them. They they don't sound any different, but there's advantages to the, to the dot .wav files when you're working in film is that that's what they use, but it also timestamps where things are, so it makes it easy to place things in a timeline. Your bit depth is going to be 24-bit. Your sample rate is going to be 44.1. Don't worry about your I.O. settings for right now. And you're going to want to click interleaved. And you're going to want to prompt for location. All right, it's going to it's going to 
default to this and it's going to give you a path. I don't want you to do that. I want you to prompt for location, right? And then you're going to create. And then I'm going to go to my desktop and I've got my um, AM1 materials. I'm going to save it in there. Now, the, the best thing to do is to have separate drives for your projects. We'll go over that. But you guys, just you're going to be working on your laptops. So this is the way to, uh, a, a way to work there. And this is what's called the Pro Tools Edit page. Now, the quickest way to learn any kind of... Oh, I see. Thank you, Daniel. Um, any kind of music software is to learn where things are and what they are. Right, look at the GUI. Everybody knows what a GUI is, graphic user interface, right? So you'll notice that Pro Tools is broken up into three areas. You've got this area on the top here, you've got this area here, and then you've got this area down here. So we're gonna go on the top and I'm gonna show you how to set this up so that it works for you. So now I've got a larger screen than you, so I'm gonna make this smaller so it's more like your laptop, and this will help me in my demonstration, and then I'm gonna zoom in. You understand what I mean? Like I've got a, this, a, a down here, I think this is a 32 inch screen. Um, so this, this will sort of simulate your laptop a little bit. Okay, great. So this top thing right here, this is called the toolbar the toolbar. And the toolbar has the tools, basically, that you're going to use. Instead of hammers and screwdrivers and stuff, it's got edit tools, it's got these, these tools over here, it's got zoom tools, it's got the counters and all this stuff. But let's go from left to right, because we don't need to see all of these things. And one thing that's really great about Pro Tools, about Logic, about Cubase, about Ableton, about all these software, is that you can customize the GUI so that it fits on your laptop, so that it shows you only the things that you need to see in order to work. So if I was gonna be mixing a film, for example, there are things that I would wanna see on here that as a composer, I do not need to see. Right, and I'll show you that in a second. So over here on the far left, on the Bernie Sanders side of the aisle, is our, um, these are our four edit modes. Shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. I will go over these in detail in the coming weeks, but for our first few projects, we are going to be working in grid mode. Now, if you notice, grid mode has that little triangle, which means if you click on it again, it changes to purple and it says relative grid. You don't want that. I will go over that in the future. So just remember, a lot of stuff I may go, I may just zoom by today. I don't want to, I've already told you 5 million things. I want to try to keep this as simple as possible to get started. So you just want it to be on the blue grid. These are your zoom tools. You don't need those for right now. So how do you get rid of those? Okay, if you go to the far right side over here, um, yeah, the Kevin McCarthy side. <laughs> we don't talk politics, but I just, you know, whatever. Anyway, there's a circle with a downward facing triangle. It has all of your things in the toolbar. So we are going to hide the zoom controls by clicking on that check mark. And notice the zoom controls are not there. These are your edit tools. We want to see these. Don't worry about these for right now. We will go over these. This is a zoomer tool. This is a trimmer tool. This is a selector tool. This is the grabber. This is the scrubber. Don't worry about this. And this is your pencil. And you notice that some of these have triangles below them, right? Make sure that this is in the standard trim. The selector is fine. 
Make sure that the grabber is on time. Don't worry about the scrub tool. We won't be using that. The pencil tool, you will make sure that it is online. We're not, we're going to be using that, but not right now. And if you see that they're all selected like this, they're all blue, just click on one. This is the smart tool. I find that this, this is helpful eventually when you get uh, facile on all this stuff. But for right now, just click on one of those and keep it individually. And there are key commands to access all these things. I will show you those as well. And the, another key to learning a software is learning key commands. Just remember, the computer is an instrument. It's the instrument of the 21st century, you know, and you need to learn key commands and how to play it like that. You know, it's like if, if you have to, if you're playing piano and you have to think about like what notes are in an A flat minor seventh chord, if you have to think about that and, and manually pick out the notes, you know, and, and, and ma well, hold on a sec, and manually pick out the notes like this, uh, it's no good. You should just be able to boom, those are the notes. Right. Okay. Um, this next bit in the middle is the counter. What it does is it counts things, right? So notice that there's some downward facing triangles here. And these are all the different kinds of modes. We're musicians. We're going to be working on bars and beats, not minutes and seconds, not time code, not feats and frames, and not samples. I would n never have any use myself for feet and frames, but if you're mixing a film, you would, right? And then I, it has a sub counter, which we don't need to see, and we just, uh, excuse me, go back to bars and beats. And I'm gonna go over what these numbers are in, in next week, okay? And this gives you the length of, a, of, a, of an area that you would select, right? So you could see I've highlighted this area here. It starts at this selection and ends at this selection, and this is the length. I will go over those numbers in the future. The next is your grid selector. So we're going to always, at the beginning, work with the grid on. And on the edit page here, you can click on this, and you get all the different values. These are the different kinds of notes that it has. And whether you want a dotted note or a triplet. So we're going to just for right now put that at one bar. And don't worry about nudge. Next to that is your transport control. And we are not going to be using the transport control right now. So we're going to get rid of that. So transport, we're going to turn it off. Other things, we don't need the synchronization. For right now, we don't need the quantize controls. We do want the meter. And we want this the uh, MIDI controls, which we're going to go over next. So now you see that it's nice and clean. And the whole toolbar should now fit on your laptop. And if you want to see any of those other things, you can simply, if you want to see the transport, you could simply add it on. And we will be using the transport in the future, but not today. Not for the first few assignments. All right. Next, over here, we've got our MIDI controls. And there's two levels to this, right? This tells us what our meter is at the particular point in the timeline. And this tells us what our tempo is. Right here, we've got four controls that can be turned on and off. This is wait for note MIDI. I used to use this to teach. I'm not sure whether they, it got unreliable. And this is one thing about Avid who runs Pro Tools that really annoys me is they take forever to clean um, bugs up, but they do something and it makes something else buggy. And so this might work, it might not work, but we're gonna use count off. So this is our, turns on our conductor. This is MIDI merge, that should be off. Oh wait. This turns on our metronome. This turns on our conductor. All right, so the metronome is the click track. So you're going to want to have these on at all times, these two. Well, not at all times, but right at the beginning here. Now, 
below that are our rulers. And what do rulers do? They don't run things. They measure things. Right? Music is a temporal discipline, meaning that things happen in time. Right? So, this right here, you see this, this gray area here? This is something that I have no use for, but if you're scoring a film, not scoring a film, if you're mixing a film with dialogue, foley, sound effects, and music, this is very helpful because it gives you, a, it's called the universe, and it gives you an overview of the entire timeline that you've got set up here. So there's two ways of getting rid of that. Again, over here on the far right, Oh, not, not there. I'm sorry. You can, you can just click and drag up and it disappears. So let me show you that again a little closer. I apologize. Right? This can be resized. But so if I hover over the lower border, you see that the cursor turns into that cross. If you click and drag up, it disappears. Now, in this area here, this is the key to the rulers. Right? And you notice if I hover over something, a little tip comes up. I'll show you how to get that working in your computer. We'll, get, we'll, we'll go over that in a second. But the top one is bars and beats. I've got this set up for bars, beats, minutes and seconds, tempo, meter, markers, and key. So what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of key. You don't need that right now. And for the beginning of our class, you won't need markers. And notice how much room you've you've saved okay we're going to use markers memory locations we're going to we're going to learn those i like to have time in minutes and seconds along here along with bars and beats okay we're going to get into here in a second but over here and over here, you notice these two white areas here, actually three, there's another one down here. These are our lists. They list things. So when you populate this with tracks, they will show up over here as well. When you create groups, they show up here. When you add clips, they show up here. This can be hidden. Let me show you two ways. You notice you hover over the border. There's a border here. You get the cross and you can close it. You can open it. Or down here at the bottom, there's an arrow with a line. If you click on that, it closes it and it opens it again and it can be resized. Right here, this is, I, I guess you call this the track header. But if I were to click on this, it gives me a list of things that I can see on that area. And for right now, we're not going to need to see the sends. So you just need to see the inserts, the I.O., and the track color. And you might not even need to see the I.O. Okay. Okay. Let's go and look at our preferences because we need to set up our preferences properly or the way that I'd like you to work, okay? So you go here to the setup menu, click, and you go all the way down to the bottom to preferences. And you click on this. And this is exactly how I want you to set this page up. Let me take a screenshot and send it to you. All right, so you're going to have your tool tips on. That's that bit where I was hovering over something and then a little, a little bit came up with the name. I still have that on even now. I've been using Pro Tools since, uh, 20, since 1999 and I still have it on. The next thing is that you are going to organize your plugin menus by category and manufacturer. Show you 
show dashboard window when Pro Tools starts. That should be clicked already. Color coding. I'm big on color coding. You make your tracks, your sessions look beautiful. Helps you with organization. So you are always going to want to display marker colors, MIDI note color shows velocity, all the stuff I'm going to go over. Your default track color coding should be tracks and MIDI channels. And there are reasons for doing the other ones, but not for what we're doing. And our default clip color coding, which I'll go over what a clip is, should be the tr same as the track color. So in other words, if you have a track, all the clips inside of the track should be the same color as the track header. So when you're looking at something, you know what it is. And then one other thing is that you're going to go to the MIDI tab. So you notice that on here there are tabs on the top. You're going to set automatically create click track in new sessions because the click track is our guiding star when we're working. It's the drummer and we're going to give the drummer some by automatically creating a click track in a new session. Now, for some reason, every once in a while you'll open up Pro Tools and there'll be no click track in there and it gets unchecked and I don't know, I haven't been able to figure out why that is. You'll just have to go back here and reset that up. All right, it takes two seconds. But let's say you want to add a click track. You've opened up your session. Well, it's very easy. You'll go here to track. You'll click on that. And then, let me you go all the way to the bottom. It says create click track all the way at the bottom. And you create click track. And there it is. It just automatically shows up, populates the top. And that's where your click track should be. It should be the very first, the very top bit. Now, this is a track. This down, this part down here, this is the this this whole this whole aggregate thing is called the edit window or the edit page, right? There's, there's also a mix page. We're not going to be working with the mix page this semester too much. I don't, maybe not even at all. Next semester, I bring it in. Um, and, and digital recording and composition, we may use it for those of you that are taking that as well. But right now, we don't need to worry about this. But this is called the edit window or the edit page. And this is the track header over here, right? And this is our timeline. And the timeline reads like a book from left to right. So this is earlier and this is later, you know, later in the piece. And if we look here on our rulers, we have bar one is here. If I click here, it's bar nine, 25. So you can see from left to right, it gets later in the piece. And what's nice about that is you could be playing something over here and then you'll be able to see something earlier happened at bar 25, and then you, you, it just helps you to anchor things. Now, you'll notice here that there are these lines. Let me make, you can resize the track too by hovering over the bottom border and you see the pointer, the cursor turns into a cross. You can click and drag that down and make that bigger. Another way you could change the size of a track is to click on this bar here and you'll notice that it, tells you what it is because it's got these little lines that get bigger as it goes up. And if you click there, whoops, let me zoom out a little, right? It gives you all these different options of track sizes where I can make a fit into the window. Boom. Now, you'll notice here that there are all these up and down lines, right? That's your grid. All right, so, you know, there's this philosophical debate about grid and whether having a grid has ruined music. And there is something, there is nothing to show up when I create new. 
Yi Sung, what do you mean by that? Okay. Don't worry about that right now because we're not, you're not doing a Pro Tools assignment this for next week. You're doing the blueprinting, which is one reason why I do that first because I want to get things troubleshoot shot uh, before we, we get into it. Okay, so these are your grids. So I've got this set up now so that there's a grid at every downbeat. And you'll notice here, if we look at the timeline as I zoom in, bar one, bar two, there's a grid. Bar three, there's a grid. Bar four, there's a grid. I can make the grid be half notes, so that means for every bar, there's two grids, and you'll no two grid lines, and you'll notice that the grids are different colors. The lines are different colors, so the downbeats are dark blue, and then all the subdivisions of the bar are lighter color. So if I change this to quarter notes, you'll see that the four quarter notes are light, and each downbeat is dark. That lets you know where your bars are. If you go to eighth notes, that becomes a little different. You notice that each beat is dark and the eighth notes, right? So this is one beat from here to here. The eighth notes are lighter. So they give you that color coordination there with the grid. But for right now, we're going to leave our grid on the full bar. And we're going to resize this and make this small. Now, one other, another setup is right here. You're going to double click on the metronome and you're going to set it so that it only clicks during record. This way when you play something back, you don't have to hear the metronome constantly. All right? So only during record. To get Pro Tools to play, you hit the space bar, right? So you all have a space bar on your laptops, right? Now, you guys, I, I have an extended keyboard, which is very helpful because there are very easy controls over here, but you guys just have a laptop and a trackpad. So I've got a trackpad here to help show you things. But to get Pro Tools to play, you hit the space bar just like this. And so if I hit the space bar, which I'm going to do right now, you see that the, the counter is moving. See that? It's moving. To stop Pro Tools, you hit the space bar again. So this starts Pro Tools, and then it also stops Pro Tools. To get back to the bar one, if you're in the middle somewhere, you hit the return key. And it goes back to bar one. So let me show you that. I can't make two separate split screens with my switcher, which I apologize for. Um, so let's say that I'm here at measure 19, and I want to get back to bar one. If I hit the return key, it goes right back to bar one. Right? So what you want to avoid is if you have a mouse, um, is using the mouse to do everything. Right, so unless you are scrolling, right? So notice how I'm moving my finger across the mouse here, or if you have a scroll wheel, what that does is that allows you to scroll across the timeline and uh, with the trackpad, it's two fingers on the trackpad. Now, there's one other little very, very, very important thing I want you to turn on. And right here, yours will, your Pro Tools will boot up. And you'll notice here in this corner, there's something that says A to Z. This is keyboard focus. So I'm going to click on that and make sure it's lit, amber. And what that does is that enables your keyboard to do stuff. So if I push the R key, which I'm just showing you now, or the T key, right? Let me let me go here. And so let me also zoom in. So I'm zooming my entire computer screen in with um, uh, hand with the access. I got it set up for that. But if I want to zoom in on a, a spot in Pro Tools, if I hit the the R key 
You see how it zooms out, the numbers get bigger here. If I hit the T key, you notice that now the distance from here to here is one measure. If I hit the R key, you see how that gets smaller and you're looking at more of a big picture view. So you can zoom in and out with the R key and the T key and there are a bunch of other things that having this turned on does, okay? I'm gonna, what you should also get in the habit of doing is save often. Okay, so on the Mac, it's Command S. Uh, let's do this. Command S, I've got my little thing right here. <laughs> so, right, that saves, Command S. I should leave that out so you can see those keys. Right, and so notice I'm if I'm hitting the R key, See how it zooms in, out, and then zooming in with the T key. Great. Okay. Oh, that also shows me when I click. Uh, this is a good app. I should leave that open. All right. So now to record, right? If you have an extended keyboard, you simply hit the three key. Uh, before that, let me, let's go back a second. Actually, I apologize. So let's add something that we can record. So we're going to do add a new track. Okay. So the key command for adding a new track is command shift and the letter N like Nancy. And so you see it right here, command shift N and all of our, we're going to add an instrument track. All of our instrument tracks are going to be stereo. All of our instrument tracks are going to be stereo. We're only going to be using stereo instrument tracks. Stereo. People inevitably mess this up. So you notice right here, it tells you the number of tracks. For right now, we're just going to create one track. One new mono. Nope. Click stereo. Audio track? No, we want to make an instrument track and I will go over all of these tracks and in ticks, that's fine. And we're gonna name it piano. And we're gonna create. And you notice here that I've got a new track and the track header is named piano. It's always important, incredibly important. It's so important that before you play anything, before you play anything, you name the track. I will show you why, you know, I'll show you why it's important. And I'll show you how to fix it if you mess up, which you all will, because I still do. But it's really important to name the track. So you, I just showed you one way of naming it. Another way would be to double click and name the track. So if I go uh, a new piano, whatever, and boom, it's, it's named. Over here, this is, I guess you'd call it the track header. This is the name of the track. These are our record, solo, and mute, right? And you activate those by clicking on them. And you see that, that now that's, Blinking red, that means that's active to record. Click on it to stop. Click on it to solo. Click on it to mute. This is what you view on the track. We are always in this class for any MIDI, uh, for any instrument track, not an audio track, but for any instrument track, we are only going to be using clips. So if you click on that, right, you notice the downward facing triangle. We're going to click on this and we're only going to be using clips. We're going to edit MIDI in the separate MIDI editor. It's just neater that way. Don't worry about any of these things for right now. Okay. This right here, this is our out, output level meter. It tells you the relative volume of this track and we're going to get into that also in more detail. Right here, this column is the inserts column. So remember, we, we have inserts, I-O, and track color. All right? So 
this is something, and I'm going to go over this in more detail. So I'll, I'll show you what all this stuff is uh, maybe next class. Um, I have a diagram, a bunch of diagrams that make it very easy to understand. So what you want to do is, this is this, there's a signal path, right? And this is an instrument track. If you hit record and I start playing the MIDI keyboard, there's no sound. There's nothing, right? You want to click here. And this brings up a, a menu. And you're going to go to the Air Music Technology. And you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And you're going to pick, oh, you're going to just go to Mini Grand, right? So Air Music Technology, you won't have this entire list. This is 20 years of crap that I've been purchasing for my computer. All right, so don't worry about that. You're just going to have Avid and Air Music Technology, most likely. So you're going to go here and you're going to pick Mini Grand. And that's just a, a decent piano plugin. And then let me do that one more time. So insert um, Air Mini Grand. And then it shows up like this. And you see that there's a line that just went across there. It's loading the, the sound in. This is based on samples. I'll explain what samples are later on. Don't worry about that. And this is a piano. So now I've got the re keyboard recorded set up and if you've got your MIDI keyboard plugged in you should be able to make some sound now make sure your keyboard is plugged in before you turn your computer on you know what I mean turn your turn your computer off plug your keyboard in turn your computer back on and it Pro Tools should see it if it doesn't see it we'll have to troubleshoot it so there's your piano track right now if I want to record something there are some key commands if you have the extended keyboard you push the number three over here and that'll start your recording if you don't have the extended keyboard you push command and the space bar and that's one of those bits in spotlight that would conflict with Pro Tools because spotlight would overrule Pro Tools so that's why you've got to fix Spotlight. So if I hit return and I hit command space bar, right? And if I start playing, it just recorded what I played. And if I hit the uh, space bar again, it starts at the beginning. and play back what I played. This whole bit right here is called a clip. All right? And this is called a MIDI clip. I'll, I'll explain that. You know, I'm gonna, I, I just, if I say something that you don't understand or you don't know what I'm talking about, just realize that I will be going over a virtually everything multiple times. And it's like a, a, a it's like a, it's like working on a wheel with a big blob of clay on it, right? You, you make it a little bit more, uh, you start off with just an undistinct form and then you make it into like a little bit of a cup and then you maybe make the curve of the cup and then you put the handle in. And you know what I mean? And the more I explain this stuff, the more detail I can go into. So I'm just giving you big ballpark figures right now. So that's a clip and I recorded that. Now, if I want to play that from the beginning of the clip, Right, I make sure that I have my selector tool selected right here. And there's a key command for that too. Um, right, I'm not doing anything with the mouse now. You see I'm navigating through all that stuff. I'll show you that stuff eventually. So I've got the selector and I can just place it on the timeline and notice it goes right to a click to the grid. You can't place it in the middle as long as grid is turned on. And then if I place it here, it'll just start playing from there. And I'm going to save that because I played something in. All right. Now, there's more stuff to do um, in terms of setup, but I just wanted to give you this. Now, one last thing. So in the setup window, you're going to go to something called Playback Engine, right? And most of you 
Uh, how many of you have an audio interface from uh, Recording Studio Fundamentals that you're going to be using? That you held on to from last semester? Mercy, Cat. So you guys, ha you're all working, correct? You have that working with headphones on, is that right? Great. So those of you that don't have an audio interface, don't worry about it. You're just going to go to the here, to the playback engine, and you're going to click on this, and you're going to go whatever whatever your computer is, laptop, Mac Pro, Mac, what or or, or PC, whatever it is, or or however it is, it's just going to be the, the default. So you're just going to make double check. It should it should default to that. And the other thing too is the don't worry about. We're going to go over the buffer size. Uh, maybe we'll do that next week. But you're not going to be um, recording anything right right away. If you want to start this up and fool around with this next week and just record a few things, no problem. Go ahead and help yourself out. Knock yourself out. But we have more stuff to do and to learn about this. Um, but right now, I think that we're going to... That, that's, that's quite a bit of information. Are there any questions on what I've gone over today? 